Hi there, Sage Canada of VO2 Max Productions here, and I'm uh, out here in Bear Canyon, running up uh, Bear Peak, hopefully, this evening, um, and I'm training for the Wings of Life World Run, which is going to be in Denver on May 4th, um, but, you know, this is a training talk, and I wanted to talk about extending your endurance, and hopefully you won't get motion sickness, uh, and you could hear me as I'm running, but, uh, just kind of a, a consistency thing in training that I think helps all sorts of runners, whether you're a professional mountain ultra runner like I am, or you're just starting getting into running. Uh, you're running your first 5K maybe, training just to finish, or you're training for the Wings of Life World Run, which is a really exciting event. But, uh, you know, first thing is this was always preached by my college coach you gotta be consistent. In your training and not just consistent with you know getting in the miles you know working on progression with your weekly mileage but consistent in getting out each you know several times a week to run maybe it's three times a week maybe four or five times a week in my case seven times a week um, and to build on that and that's not necessarily how many miles you run or how many minutes you run for but that you're consistent in that and then there's a progression there that you could slowly build upon and they don't have to be intense runs. They could be easy paced runs, conversational pace. Like right now, I'm kind of having trouble breathing, but it's because I'm running uphill at altitude. Um, but you know, it could be 70% type of effort and just putting in time on your feet. All right, so the other thing with extending your endurance and becoming a better runner is mainly just watching your health too, and this is you know fairly obvious, but getting enough sleep each night, hydrating, eating healthy food, it's really allow you, going to allow you to train at a much higher level and absorb those harder workouts. Because you know running's stressful. You don't want it to be too much of a de-stress, though. You want it to be a eustress. You want to do it to lower your blood pressure, to to make yourself have a better sense of well-being. So you know. Other life factors that affect your health need to be in, in line as well. And that goes in hand with training at a point where you're not overtraining and you're not injuring yourself. And I think this is the key with a lot of people. You know, you're gonna get knee pain, you're gonna get a tendonitis, or worse would be a stress fracture. You can't have that. If you're injured, you're not running at all. You're not training, you're not improving in the long term. And it's a really delicate balance. It's definitely something I have pushed too far, I've overtrained, I've known countless people that have gotten stress fractures, tendonitis, a lot of runners get injured, but you've got to be smart about your training in that regard as well. So how do you do that? Well, part of the reason is uh, having variety in your training, having some high mileage weeks, but then having some, some rest periods, some lower mileage weeks, not forcing the issue. If you're in, you know, you have structural pain, you have some serious knee pain or tendonitis, take a day off, rest it, ice it, get treatment, uh, you know, clean up your diet. I know it's hard when you're, you're stressed out and you're looking for fast food or something, but uh, that's really helped me in the eating a lot more fruits and vegetables and uh, reducing that inflammation. So uh, other than that, keep a training log. Just uh, track down your miles and on a piece of paper or upload them online, I use strava.com, but uh, kind of leave some comments about how you felt after a workout and you know if you had any niggles or pain or what kind of effort you were putting in, how many miles or minutes or both that you're running each week. Kind of track your training and have future mini goals ahead of you. So it definitely helps to have some goals such as a race or an event that you could focus on that might be four weeks, six weeks, 16 weeks in advance, uh, little milestones along the way to help you progress to the level that you eventually want to be. And then I guess my final tip of advice with that would be just enjoy the sport. 
have fun, you know, go out with a group of friends, meet up, meet new people, run new routes, go to new destinations. And, you know, I'm really fortunate to be able to do this as a lifestyle, travel around the world doing races, but this local event, Wings for Life, I think is a really, it's a near and dear charity to my heart. Uh, my sister Ming's coming in to do the event in her wheelchair and 100% uh, of the uh, entry fee goes towards spinal cord research. And it's an event that's run all over the world uh, this year at the same time on May 4th and everyone's racing each other but also racing a moving finish line that comes up behind you in the form of a chase car. So check that out. Uh, the website www.wingsforlifeworldrun.com and I uh, hope to see you out there. Also, just one more thing, uh, if you want to stay updated for the latest videos and some more training talks, feel free to subscribe to my channel here, VO2 Max Productions. Uh, I really come out with new videos on training advice and race reports and footage from around the world, so I really do appreciate all the views. And Check out that Wings for Life uh, World Run. Uh, it's a great charity that I'm fortunate to be able to partner with and, and spread the word about, so I really do appreciate all the support and all the clicks. So. Uh, thanks again for watching and best of luck with your own training. Alright, take care.